Welcome, Watchers of Illusion, to my Castle of Confusion, and welcome to National Mario Day. Yes, it does exist, and apparently it's because March the 10th looks like Mario. When you uh, take the first three letters of March, and then the one and the zero, it does actually look like Mario. So there you go, and it is a uh, an annual holiday, believe it or not. So yeah, well done, Nintendo. Well played. Why can't we have holidays like that over here? It would be so awesome. But never mind. So I thought, as it's International Mario Day, I would have a look at Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo, SNES, or Super Famicom, whichever region you're from. And uh, I absolutely love this game. I could play this for hours. So I'm not going to, because otherwise um, you might be a bit bored by then. But I'm going to play through at least... I'm going to try and get through the map, uh, the first level map, and... Uh, show you guys a good portion of the game. As you can see, they've kept things rather like the Mario that we all know and love. The uh, the drain pipes going down them is really cool. Now you'll notice that Mario has a spin jump this time around. You have a normal jump, you also have a spin technique as well, which, um, which makes blocks easy to break. There are certain uh, block blocks that you can uh, break through as you saw back then. Um, Mario also retains some abilities like sliding down hills and stuff like that um, which is really really cool. Now you'll notice in the top of the screen I have five lives and also you can see the coin count and then there is the box with the mushroom in it. Now what happens there? If I get hit and I lose my Super Mario status, that mushroom will drop down from the box and I can collect it, assuming it doesn't drop through the screen and I can't retrieve it, but they do drop down so you can uh, re-power up if you uh, if you do lose it, which is quite a nice feature actually. It's it's kind of like the... Um, it's, a, it's a bit like the Mario 3 uh, map system that they've got. Except for this time it's live, and that's quite nice. So now you see I've lost that, but uh, I'm not going to be able to get that because... Oh, poo. Never mind. But you can see there that the mushroom dropped down. If I'd have picked that up, I would have gone Super Mario again, and that would have been absolutely perfect. But I didn't, so I won't. But there you go. Never mind. But you can see it's an absolute belter of a game, and I, th I think this was one of the SNES's best um, games of all time. And uh, there's quite a lot of people that would agree with that. This is by far one of the best Mario games for the system. There was the Lost Levels as well. Uh, Mario, Super Mario All-Stars, I think it was called. And they had um, renditions of the games. I must get around to reviewing that one as well, actually. Which I will do in the near future, folks. But yes, uh, this is absolutely fantastic. So what you've got to do here is break through and... <laughs> I failed miserably, but if you break through there, you can get stars, and then you can get points from that, which is great. Um, the Yoshi coins, uh, if you collect those, you'll also get um, you get bonuses for that as well, and extra lives and stuff. We will be, um, hopefully, encountering Yoshi soon. Now, this is the first power block you come to, and this will turn any of the yellow blocks, um, or the vacant yellow blocks, I should say, and I epically failed to actually jump on that. Uh, it will turn any vacant yellow blocks into solid yellow blocks. So um, it's always best to go back and try levels again because there's always going to be blocks that weren't there, or they had they were spaces, and and you'll find all the power switches as you go through the levels as well. So you will always be able to uh, access areas that you were previously unable to by doing exactly what I've just done there. Find a switch palace, and not all of them, not all of them are easy to find. So some of them will keep you coming back for more. Um, but once you have done it, a lot of the uh, blocks will turn into yellow solids, and you'll see where you'll see what this is actually going to do in a minute. Let's continue and save so we can carry on. Now you can see we're going to try and aim to get to that castle in the top right-hand corner. So let's power our way through some of these levels, and I can show you a bit more of the game. Now this is the level that we get Yoshi on. Here's a nice level up trick, by the way. Uh, you can exit the level, come back and do that as many times as you want, just so you know. Uh, that's a bit of a, a cheat system there, but uh, yes, you can get tons of lives just doing that n nice little trick. Get the red shell, blast down the turtles, and uh, you will get uh, as many extra lives as you can put up with doing. Easy peasy. Um, now, Yoshi. He can eat stuff. 
or he can hold it in his mouth and spit it out as such. Now red shells will give him a uh, fireball, as you can just saw there. Uh, green shells, basically you spit them out as you would a normal green shell when you kick it. I think I'm going to do that now for you. There you go, just lob it out. Now, if you do lose Yoshi, he runs around like he's got his ass on fire, and you can run after him. But if he does fall down, you do lose him permanently, so uh, Yoshi does pop up again in other levels. That, by the way, is a halfway marker, so if you get that and you die, you will restart at that point. Uh, Yoshi, if he eats uh, those fruits, when he gets enough of them, uh, he will lay an egg and that will give you an extra life, which is nice. And I'm going to try and get up there. I'm going to jump on Yoshi, I thought I would. Alright, so I'm going to put him down here. So now I can go and investigate the plant. So there again, another hidden Yoshi coin. So it's always best to try and get those if you can. You can see the timer as well. You're always against the timer, which is quite nice. And it's always fair. There you go. There. Oh, it's, it's a, a mushroom. Sorry, not an extra life. Um, but you can see there that uh, those exclamation blocks, that is a result of finding the yellow switch palace. So that's really, really cool. So there's an exact um, example there of what the yellow switch palace did and pushing that yellow switch. Now I think, can I eat those? No. I think what I'm going to have to do is either try and headbutt them really hard. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I've got to actually grab those blocks and throw them. Uh, let's let's give that a try, shall we? Oh, yes. Yes, it's been a while since I've played this, folks. So, um, go easy. Oh, I just demolished those. That was great. Let's see how many I can get. Oh, extra life. I've got 13 lives. Unlucky for some, but not for me. But I love the graphics on this. The, the scrolling is so smooth, and the sound effects and music are absolutely beautiful. I actually really, really like the uh, the SNES sounds. I've always preferred the SNES over the Mega Drive, uh, especially sound-wise. I've always found the, the SNES has a slightly meatier sound to it, if that makes sense. Uh, it always seems to have a lot more bass to the uh, music and stuff like that as well. I mean, I was always a... I, I had a SNES when I was growing up. I didn't particularly have a Mega Drive. It wasn't, wasn't really anything I, I really liked. The uh, Nintendo consoles were what I stuck with when I was younger. I, I, you know, I like them both now, but back then I was a firmly a Nintendo man. Anyway, talking of Nintendo, has anyone got their Switch yet? And if you have, what do you think of it? There's a lot of negativity going around. Well, it's not to say a lot of negativity. There's a little bit of negativity going around. But, you know, it's a, it's a new console. No console release has ever been flawless. Let's um, So let's not give it such a hard time. Nintendo will, uh, will sort it out. Don't worry. But, yeah, apparently Breath of the Wild is a rather breathtaking. That's something I would love to have a play on. But I can't afford any games at the moment. I have a Switch, but no games. Go figure. But you know what it's like, especially in Europe. Get the consoles while you can, because sometimes you're not guaranteed to get them again. Anyway, uh, back to Mario. I I'm actually looking forward to Mario Odyssey, by the way. That's going to be a bit of a corker. Not out till the end of the year, but never mind. Anyway, that's enough of the Nintendo Switch. Let's get back to the Super Nintendo. And how, how well are these levels designed? I mean, I, I've always liked the way Mario games are laid out. I think the level design is is really really cool. And lots of little secrets to find. Now there is a there is a feather you can get and uh, it enables you to fly. It gives you a cape and you can you can actually take off like you could with the um, with the raccoon tail in Mario, but this time you get a in Mario 3. But this time you can actually fly, float, dive bomb, all sorts of stuff. It's great fun. And I'm not sure why I haven't actually found one yet. Um I thought there was one on level 1. Never mind. Oh well. Uh, if I don't get to show you, then that's a shame. But if, if not, I'm sure there's plenty of other videos that you could have a check out and see the uh, the feather in effect. But um, yes, here, so here we go. These, these levels are, are awesome. I really, really like them. And you see, if I didn't have the yellow blocks there, by the way, I would have fallen to my doom. So there you go. There's That's why you find out the Switch palaces and make sure that you enable all the switches. Great fun. Ah, there we go. Switches. That's just things, how things come full circle, isn't it? Anyway, um, graphically, I think this is great. I mean, it's so cartoony and cute. And Mario does his pull of the hat when you were uh, when you when you crouch down Mario grabs his hat and pulls it down which is straight from Mario 3 I, I really love the fact that they've taken the best of all the games and stuck them together in one massive adventure and I think that if you like 
this kind of game, platformy, puzzly type games, you are going to lap this game up. And if you're a Mario fan, you're going to love it. And you can see now that I, because I've got two fire flowers, the one has been replaced up in the top as a fire flower and not a mushroom. So that's quite nice. So if I do lose my Super Mario status this time, I've got the chance to regain as a fire flower. I love the fact Yoshi can eat everything as well. There seems to be no restriction to what he won't force down his mouth. And that was a cactus man. It's just... Pleh. What? So yes, Yoshi is very good to have. And uh, I say you find him at various intervals. So don't worry if you do lose your Yoshi, you can go and find him again. Now the idea basically is the same with any other Mario game, is to reach the castles, destroy the castles, and uh, I think at this time you're rescuing Yoshi's eggs, I believe. And the, the clever thing is, once you've rescued them, I think you can go and view them on the bottom of the map on the first stage. Uh, you can go to Yoshi's house, and I think you can view the eggs there that you've rescued, which is quite a nice touch. Uh, you can see here that I'm doing spectacularly badly here, but... Um, Never mind, but I got my Super Mario status back. I think you can see that was, a, that was a good example and lost it straight away. Me and my big mouth. Anyway, so 100 coins gets you an extra life, as it would do in any other Mario game. So it's it's basically Super Mario with knobs on. And rather big knobs uh, to boot, ladies and gentlemen. This game is brilliant. And it'll keep you entertained for <sighs> ages. There's lots of hidden little secrets. There's lots of things you can do. It is two-player, but it's turn-based, as with any, any other Mario game. So one of you will take control of a Luigi, and then you can turn base. So as soon as you lose your lives, then your friend will take controller two and continue their journey, and then vice versa, and so on and so forth, which is great. Now, I love this. Um, when the turtles are on the opposite side of the fence, you can punch them off, which is great, as you can see there. Uh, there are some gates as well here, which you can punch and you can swing yourself, so you can actually go round onto the other side of the fence, which I'm hoping there will be one here I can show you. Let's get this uh, thing out of the way first. Got to be careful that those don't hit you. I mean, there's so much to do and see in this game. You're not going to get it done in one sitting. So I would, uh, I would put some time aside, get yourself a pizza, grab yourself some pop or beer or whatever you want to do, and give yourself a thoroughly great Mario session. I, uh, there you go, you can punch it and I can go on the other side. There are certain levels you need to actually do that. So it's not just a, not just one of those clever little tricks that they expect you to do. It does have a relevance later on. So, ladies and gents, we are going to get to the end level boss. And we're going to go through this. The farty doors, as I like to call them. Now this is fun because you can't get hit by that, which was too close for comfort there, ladies and gents. But this forces you to move, so that you've got to really sort of look where that stomper is coming from and make sure you don't get trapped underneath it, because if you do get hit by it, it's game over. So I don't really want to be there because there's a gap. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've got enough room. It's, it did, makes you think I nearly ran off the edge there. But you can keep in front of it, and now it's boss time. So basically you've got to knock him into the lava, which is easier said than done, because obviously it is moving constantly, and he just looked like he threw his head at me. But no, we've done it! We have beaten the first boss, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. I've been Rich, and, uh, oh, by the way, hello, new subscribers, great to have you along. Glad you're enjoying my content. Talking of which, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with you on Monday. Have a cracking weekend, folks, and I'll catch you in the next Retro Revival show. Take care. Bye for now.